Today is day 356 of the October 7th war, a war that Hamas started, Hezbollah joined the next day, and now evolves Iran and its proxies on a total of seven fronts around Israel. Iran has established a ring of fire around Israel. These are difficult days, but great news. The United States and France have agreed to a ceasefire. You might be thinking, I didn't know the US and France were at war. And you'd be right. The US and France, along with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and others, published a statement calling for a three week ceasefire between Israel and Lebanon. I read the statement. There's a word missing. The word is Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Is the army of terrorists inside Lebanon that has been attacking Israelis every day for the past year. Does the ceasefire require Hezbollah to disarm? No. Does it require Hezbollah to move away from the Israeli border? No. Does it require Hezbollah to end its war against the people of Israel? No. The statement just calls on the parties to give a real chance to a diplomatic settlement. Hezbollah has been attacking Israelis every day for the past year. I want to know. Where have all the world's diplomats been until now? If you know, let me know in the comments. Well, I was just handed a, a printout of, this, of the statement from the、uh, world powers. I'm going to read the whole thing to you in case you're just listening in your car on your podcast and you can't open up a new tab on your internet browser itself. This is the statement. I have it right here. It says Joint statement by the United States, Australia, Canada, European Union, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom. Qatar. Here it is. The statement says The situation between Lebanon and Israel since October 8th, 2023 is intolerable and presents an unacceptable risk of a broader regional escalation. This is in nobody's interests, neither of the people of Israel nor of the people of Lebanon. It is time to conclude a diplomatic settlement that enables civilians on both sides of the border to return to their homes safely. In safety. Diplomacy, however, cannot succeed amid an escalation of this conflict. Thus, we call for an immediate 21 day ceasefire across the Lebanon Israel border to provide space for diplomacy towards the conclusion of a diplomatic settlement consistent with UNSCR 1701 and the implementation of UNSCR 2735 regarding a ceasefire in Gaza. We call on all parties, including the governments of Israel and Lebanon, To endorse the temporary ceasefire immediately consistent with UNSCR 1701 during this period and to give a real chance to a diplomatic settlement. We are then prepared to fully support all diplomatic efforts to conclude an agreement between Lebanon and Israel within this period, building on efforts over the last months that ends this crisis together. That is the statement that was just published by these countries today, and it is the main news item certainly、uh, in Israel. But the statement calls on the governments of Israel and Lebanon to accept a ceasefire. The US, France, and the others who co signed are implying that the government of Lebanon is responsible for the attacks on Israel that come from the territory of Lebanon. That would be news to the government of Lebanon, which does nothing to stop Hezbollah. This brings me to another important point about the statement calling for a ceasefire. As you heard, the statement says, That the ceasefire should be consistent with UN Security Council Resolution 1701. That is the resolution that ended Israel's last war against Hezbollah in 2006. That was 18 years ago. Resolution 1701 was supposed to prevent another war from happening ever again. Clearly, it failed. Resolution 1701 was supposed to prevent another war from happening again because it demanded that Hezbollah disarm and move away from the Israeli border. And it said that there should be no forces near the Israeli border that are outside the authority of the government of Lebanon. In other words, the government of Lebanon was supposed to take responsibility for Lebanon. It never happened. Does anyone believe that it will happen now? The government of Lebanon does not control Hezbollah. If anything, Hezbollah controls the Lebanese government. The UN peacekeepers in Lebanon. Did not keep any peace for the past 18 years or in the decades before that. They did not stop Hezbollah from firing 9,000 missiles and drones at Israelis in the past year. As of right now, it's about 3 05 p.m. in Israel. There doesn't appear to be a ceasefire. I can tell you a few hours ago, 
I saw video from our co-founder, Elon Levy. He's in northern Israel right now. He was taking cover from incoming Hezbollah rocket fire. That's not a sign that there is a ceasefire. Also a short while ago, the IDF announced that it targeted infrastructure along the Syria-Lebanon border, infrastructure that was used by Hezbollah to transfer weapons from Syria to Hezbollah and Lebanon. Now, Hezbollah also issued a statement today in which it took responsibility for attacking the Israeli town of Kiryat Motzkin, just north of Haifa. In other words, Hezbollah has taken responsibility for targeting Israeli civilians. A wider war can still be avoided, but it can only be avoided through massive pressure immediately on Hezbollah and on the Iranian regime that backs it. Hezbollah must back off or Israel will have to push it away. Israel is already under attack on seven fronts. It's made much more difficult if world powers open a diplomatic front against Israel, which appears to be what is happening. Many world leaders will be meeting in the days ahead on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York. We here at the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office will be watching that very closely, along with any news about this potential ceasefire. Let's take some questions from our audience that is watching live on social media. Question comes from John on X. Regarding the 21-day ceasefire, do you think that Israel will agree, and do you think that it would help if China, Iran, and Russia were to get involved in the diplomatic process? Well, right now, based on only the text that I read, it does not sound like something that Israel would favor, because Israel has been very clear about what are its goals in its self-defense operations. Remember, Hezbollah has been firing on Israel for the past year, firing anti-tank missiles into Israeli houses, forcing 60,000 Israelis in northern Israel to flee. So Israel's goal is to ensure that those 60,000 Israelis can live safely in their homes. What does it mean to be able to live safely in their homes? It means that Hezbollah is not standing in the bushes a few hundred uh, yards away with an anti-tank missile ready to fire if it so feels like. The, from Israel's perspective, the equation has changed. We are not in an October 6th reality. We're in an October 8th reality. We cannot sit back and watch while a terrorist army that has the intention destroy is to destroy Israel also acquires the capabilities, okay? So Israel would like to see, of course, a ceasefire would be very nice, but we don't want the war to start again like this. We want Israelis to be safe in their homes. Now, if such a ceasefire proposal moves to the United Nations Security Council and another resolution passes through the Security Council, which means it's with Russia and China's support, um, it would certainly raise concerns that you'd want to read the text very closely to make sure Israel's security needs are guaranteed and not overlooked, but we'll have to wait and see what happens at the UN over the next few days. Our next question comes from Sammy Tisser. Could one ceasefire end the war on all seven fronts, including the Houthis, Iran, and all of the others? It's a complicated question. Could a ceasefire end the war? I mean, a war is by definition the opposite of a ceasefire. So if there's a ceasefire, it means there's no war. But what happens the day after? The question is, is there going to be another war soon? If there's a ceasefire and Israel is still surrounded on these seven fronts by these Iranian proxies that want to destroy it, and those Iranian proxies haven't changed their mind, then why should Israel be excited about a ceasefire? If a ceasefire allows the Iranian proxies, specifically Hamas, Hezbollah, to rearm and start another war at a time and place of their choosing, then that is, that is a ceasefire that offers false hope. So that's why Israel has been very clear about its war goals. First, in the war in Gaza, the destruction of Hamas's military and government capabilities is a condition for a ceasefire. The release of all the hostages is a condition for a ceasefire. And the third item is to make sure that Gaza never poses a threat to Israel again. Okay? Now, there could be tactical ceasefires, there could be pauses, there is diplomatic room for maneuvering along the margins, but the big picture rena remains that we cannot allow what happened on October 7th to happen again, and that's what groups like Hamas and Hezbollah are, are, are pledging to do. Our next question comes from Instagram. RALT57 is wondering, has Hezbollah taken total control of the Lebanese government and 
If so, how do we negotiate with terrorists? I think Hezbollah has taken just the right amount of control of the Lebanese government that it needs to be able to have the freedom of action that it wants without totally seizing power in Lebanon and being the obvious sovereign in Lebanon and being responsible for the decisions that a sovereign government would make. So Hezbollah, first of all, is an Iranian uh, proxy militia. It's Lebanese people, an Iranian proxy in Lebanon. They're a very powerful army. They have more weapons than most armies in the world. And they have also made a decision in the past uh, decade to answer Lebanese politics. So Hezbollah is a political force within the Lebanese political system. And what that means is that, let's say the government of Lebanon wants to pass a law that uh, we're going to disarm Hezbollah. Well, Hezbollah has enough political power as it is to prevent such a law from ever passing. So it has just the right of power, amount of power that it needs to, to maintain its, its interests and have some sort of plausible deniability like, oh, Lebanon's not us, we're not exactly the Lebanese government, so look somewhere else. Are there any comments from environmental activists around the world about the Hezbollah attacks and rockets falling in the Mediterranean Sea? As far as I can tell, no. If you have seen anything, come across anything on social media as you're reading the news, please send it to me. I have not seen environmental groups publish any statements in favor of, uh, of not just Israel, but of the basic facts of the situation that Hezbollah has fired so many rockets into Israel that have sparked fires, burned trees, poisoned the air that we all breathe in Israel and Lebanon. So yes, it's been a bit disappointing to see um, many who are in the environmental movement are anti-Israel activists protesting on the street, joining the, joining the mob ag against Israel. Um, if you're involved in this kind of movement, I hope you can steer them in the right direction. Our last question today comes from Kidon. Do you think that Iran is directly intervening in the war between Lebanon and Israel? Yes. Um, Hezbollah, which is this Lebanese militia in southern Lebanon and in other parts of Lebanon, it receives its money from Iran. It receives its weapons from Iran. It receives its training from Iran. And in effect, it receives its orders from Iran. Iran has never come out and said, wait, Hezbollah should not attack Israel. No, of course not. Hezbollah is doing this completely with Iran's blessing. Hezbollah started its attacks on October 8th. Iran had no problem with this. In fact, encouraged it. It's a second front against Israel, right? Hamas in Gaza is taking resources away from the Israel's defense capabilities to, to defend ourselves on all seven fronts. So what Hezbollah wanted to do in the north is relieve some of the pressure that Israel was putting on Hamas. And of course, Iran is not just in those two places. We're talking about seven fronts, Gaza, Lebanon, West Bank, uh, Syria, Yemen, militias in Iraq, and Iran itself. So Hezbollah and Iran are completely in line, so much that Hezbollah members swear uh, allegiance and loyalty to the supreme leader of Iran as their supreme religious authority. So the connections are very tight between Hezbollah in Lebanon and Iran, the regime in Iran, and the Revolutionary Guard. That's all the time we have for today. This was the live daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. As always, follow us on our social media platforms. If I didn't get to your question, you can track me down personally on my social media platforms. We are live every day in Israel, Sunday to Thursday, 3 p.m. Israel time, 8 a.m. on the East Coast. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. I'm Daniel Rubenstein, and this has been the Live Daily Briefing.